Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? Great. I just Great. heard that voice this morning. Pardon me? I just heard that voice this morning while I was getting the kids ready for school. <laughs> what? Re- what? Gumball? Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, good. That's, that's a family favorite of uh, in this house, obviously. But oh, that's uh, great. excited to see you guys are doing the movie here. I mean, I'd heard so much about the rumors, but uh, I didn't actually see about it till you uh, sent us the email. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know about that until about four or five days ago myself. But yeah, um, that's that's crazy. A friend of mine uh, just kind of let me know, and um, yeah, it was. It's just come on, it's a movie. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have we have no idea about time, but just the fact that that they someone made it official is a it, it, it's you know it's good to know, right? So, uh, yeah. yeah, we didn't we didn't want that show to end. There there are only a few shows that really are so good that we, that we never want them to stop, and that was one of them, like that and like the Adventure Time uh, mm-hmm. show, which they're still making new stuff for it too. So just just to be able to see it live on is cool. Yeah, I know. They I was talking to my director uh, Richard Overall, and uh, it, it and when it was coming to an end, he, he did comment, you know, dude, we made a lot of shows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are a true. bucket of shows, uh, but no, you never. I mean, I was just I was just as you go through, it's, it's hard. You can't be objective about it. It was just nice to see a new season coming what's interesting is that uh they um i don't think they commissioned normal numbers of show it's usually 26 and 52s and mm-hmm, they were yeah. commissioning like 40s and and lots of lots of different numbers uh but um yeah it was, it was just yeah it just went we did six seasons and yeah. um and and then and we, i think we did 40 shows in the last season and I play 11 characters in the show and don't ask me to name them because I can't, <laughs> um, you know, the uh, donut cop and, and uh, of course, Richard uh, and Gary Hedges. I think there's a few, few, oh, few okay. guys I do in there. And the process was, I'm sure you figured it out. The process was just you show up and, uh, and uh, you get s- scripts a couple of days before the show and you just have a, quick peruse and see what you're doing put it in some kind of context and we record one person at a time and uh, yeah. yeah that show that show is one of the fastest paced shows i think i've it's seen very fast show. paced yeah and, but <laughs> it's was... really intelligent what is it like getting a getting one of those scripts and it's just a little bizarre and out there but super smart uh the bizarre and out there you, you can't doesn't face me at all <laughs> I, I just don't care you know i i i it's it's it a friend of mine who was was as was lead actor in another series said said one time uh do you think much about richard and i said no he said, <laughs> doing that that's what you're gonna do don't think about it. yeah because nice. uh because uh but anyway uh, uh as far as the surrealness no i, I just bring it on right. um it, yeah, I it, love shows that are just out there, surreal, just weird. Yeah, but the, but the but the Todd thing, you know, it's like baseball. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Right. Um, you know, it, it's hard to write that uh, write that out there stuff, but have it plot be plot somewhat plot motivated. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Because it doesn't ring true otherwise. It's just silly stuff. Yeah, and and and, and that's the that's the interesting thing. You know, can you? can you get out there enough, uh, you know, to, to, to write uh, off the wall type of stuff. But it, it, the lesson I, I, I learned years ago uh, is that if you don't do something f- for real, people can tell. And it started for me, I was doing a commercial, I was doing a I was doing a radio commercial for a pet cemetery <laughs> and, and you had to be dead oh, straight. Man. You had to, you know, when, oh, when, man. <laughs> when that, when that special one in your life passes on, you want to, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And um, I realized then that unless for that 
30, 40 seconds while you were doing it, you were completely invested in dead serious. Yeah. It sa- something in the human voice sounded like it wasn't real. And, 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 and that's what was nice with Gumball was that it, 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 no matter how silly it got, everything seemed to have some kind of a, a, a line through it, some kind right. of a, uh, some kind of a purpose. But uh, to answer your, your question, so I'm being very verbose here. Uh, it was just, just, I'd like to say more, but it was just plain wonderful. You yeah. Know, you, you knew the scripts were on it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't no, it, question it. You just, just did it. It's hard to, uh, to find a, a show that both the kids and the parents can enjoy and, and get something out of. So it's, it's crazy that we've talked about this before. Every time a show like that comes out, I think you, this is it. This is the last one. They're never going to make another show that appeals to me. And then another one comes out and it, it's <laughs> great to be able to find those. Well, there's a lot of clever people out there. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. And uh, I, I guess it's just the ability to, I don't know, to create these, you know, it's just writing, writing, writing. It just, just comes down to that. I mean, it's yeah. just so important. A bunch of the BAFTAs that uh, Gumball won was for writing. I don't, uh, I don't doubt that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they won like seven or eight BAFTAs and five or five daytime Emmys and a bunch of other things. And right. uh, a lot of that was for, a lot of that was for writing. I mean, it was definitely a very character driven show. And the, like you said, it, it's, it's really hard to string along a plot line while, while all that madness is going on. And I guess a lot of fans were disappointed by the ending because of that, because they were just sort of invested in these characters. And I, it's great that we get to have it wrapped up in a movie. I'm always a fan for that. There was some pretty weird, <laughs> there were some very weird shows in Gumball. And I know that. I, <laughs> I think that's I an know, understatement. <laughs> yeah, I know because of course I wasn't in all of them, and so you you know I'm I'm not you know constantly, uh, constantly uh, watching wh- what they're doing. But I I know right. there was, there were some shows in there that were getting were getting a little. <laughs> a little oh, bit surreal yeah. even for the guys <laughs> you're aware of it and it's and it's and and it's but you and you see some of it but but i don't watch it a great deal in fact the other night my son's home from university and uh we just sat and watched gumball the other night for a for a part of an evening and um then my then my wife flipped up on Anim- amazon um the cast and um there wasn't a picture of me so i went to bed in absolute huff <laughs> how dare they do that <laughs> but when it, when gumbo came out the kids were little uh um um gee i think i think they were like like eight and ten or something like that and so uh it kind of i was i was a, a hip voice dad sometimes <laughs> and, uh, and not at others right but, uh the fact There's that your story. dad is always kind of there well, <laughs> you can't yeah. get rid of that <laughs> well yeah there there is yeah of course, yeah exactly you know when i'm doing stuff around the house or something uh you know it's <laughs> they just they just look at the richard and say dad it's you um, <laughs> but uh jack uh my my son was little and i I tell this story. I, I don't do voiceover dad stuff. I never did. You'd think, you know, it's pro voice guy. You when you're reading the stories for the kids and all that sort of stuff. And I never did that. I thought that was a form of torture. But I actually <laughs> accidentally did it once. Uh, he made me really angry, and he was about five, and 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 he just he just made me really angry. And I picked him up by his by his, his stomach, and I brought him nose to nose to me, and and I looked at him. I said. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. <laughs> oh, that's and he never forgot it. Because <laughs> I used to do a lot of uh, trailers, you know, all that uh, La Fontaine type of stuff. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I do that. So uh, uh, I did, well, there was one episode where I'm uh, Penny's dad. Um, oh, okay. I, I played Penny's dad. And yeah. There was a cute scene in it where, uh, where um, I got to do the Liam Neeson speech. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, that was that was that came out came out well. But you know, I I have a set of skills and all that. You know that stuff. But yeah, it's been it's been a good show, and we might be making a movie. And I'm uh, I'm directing a lot of. I do a lot of voice directing. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a lot of that. Um, How's that going? It's good. Uh, people will ask me to find a cast, so I'm a casting guy, and uh, I'll find a cast for them. And uh, and of course, everything's remote. My wife has been really unwell the last three years, uh, oh, and sorry. I was uh, was trying to uh, work from my own studio more and more and more. Anyway, and so yeah. it's worked out pretty good. So uh, so some days I'm directing, and some days I'm voicing. I'm doing some commercials here and. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, voice directing a show starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, wow. Fun. Um, <laughs> I'm not directing Mr. Schwarzenegger, uh, himself, but I'm directing everybody else. And, uh, I cast it and I get to play the bad guy. So oh, I'll nice. get to oh, cool. me being the bad guy with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Which is, <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's kind of how the days play out. I, it, it's, it's almost, it's, it's almost turned it into an, an endless weekend. You know, right. pick up, go, <laughs> go to the studio, hang out, do stuff, wine 30, binge watch, go to sleep, repeat. <laughs> Doesn't sound so, so bad to me. <laughs> so you're a, no, a you just, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining. You know, there's even after all these years, uh, you, you know, you still got to wait for the phone to ring and that never goes away. Right. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, that's, that's pretty scary. Uh, but, uh, you know, we managed to manage to, to keep on keeping on so are you guys in ohio we yeah. are yeah yeah we are that sounds so romantic to me uh, ohio. <laughs> we were it, it's, it's not getting it's, out of ohio fine, yeah <laughs> wow. well i'm i'm one of those awful people that's an east coast west coast guy and i've hardly ever been to the west coast i'm from boston originally right and uh i was supposed to be a rock and roll star uh, I, I can relate uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I can see the guitar. What's that behind you? Uh, Gibson ES one twenty five. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a good deal. I got a, I got go. a couple Hagstroms hanging around here too. Oh, that's nice. That up there is is sort of where I my guitar wreck. I got seven. I was a pro guitar player for a while. Um, yeah, I read that. Yeah, in, 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 er, early on. But uh, uh, yeah, so I was from Boston and. Uh, uh, I hate to say because it it's so boring, but the whole British invasion just kind of happened, and I was playing music. I was playing. I was cut my teeth on, on the Kingston Trio and the Beach Boys, Ricky Nelson, and you know all that stuff ages and yeah. ages ago. And then the whole '60s happened, and blah blah blah. But I got my degree in business. But they had a. Uh, I was in upstate New York at Ithaca College, and they had a program in London, and you could just sign on the dotted line and come to London for six months or oh, a year. Wow. So I came oh, wow. over for a year and London was just like an old orange shirt. It just felt great from day one yeah. for me personally. Maybe that's kind of a being an East Coast guy. I don't know. But in my <laughs> mind, if I was going, you know, I, like I said, I got my degree in business, but in my mind, if I was going to try to play and sing and, and perform, it was going to be New York or L.A., and New York scared me to death. I did not oh. want to be an out of work musician <laughs> in New York. And and L.A. and the West Coast felt like a just another planet. It was all big stadium rock. And and in my mind, I I just didn't have the maybe the guts is the word to 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 make that change. And I was here in London, and I made a few connections, and so I came back in 77 and i've been here uh ever since and then the voices and i did nightclubs six nights a week for six or eight years playing and singing yeah and uh then in 84 uh the voices kicked off and i realized i was good at it and uh and thoroughly enjoyed it and i've been speaking and singing ever since um and i uh we start i started cartoons about 93 94 and um yeah i i'm I'm knocking on four or five thousand shows now we've done (laughs) a lot because it's always it's all series work you get them in batches of 26 and and or uh, 52 and you you never know where they're going to be showing or what's going to happen to them just 
give it your best shot. And um, the amount of autonomy I've had has just been insane. I've gotten to direct a lot of them and, and put a lot into it. And then Gumball arrived and here I am. Cool, cool. Uh, we talked to a lot of people who start out voice acting and then like pick up music. And it, I think it's a little less common for them to have started with music and then gone into voice acting. Does it make you see or does it make you approach a role differently? Do you, does it help with the voicing or the breathing or sort well, of a um, rhythmic phrasing? Uh, um, there are, there are a lot of musical people that, that, that go into voice acting because they, because uh, of having, of having a, a good ear but I don't know what parts of the brain work in different people. We have a guy who's just, he, he we used him in a show. Uh, we, I did a lot of shows, a really nice fella and very, very good voice artist, but he hated to sing. He could not sing. He would not sing to the point that we used to just have so much fun making him sing. Just to watch, <laughs> just to watch. <laughs> Come on, let's get, let's get him to sing today. And, um, and and yet the impersonations he would do would be scary they were so crazy if he doesn't have a musical air how is he doing that right Mm -hmm. so to answer your question the path that it goes through through an individual's head um is is uh is its own path right you know you think musical people would be uh, you know they 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 would have a, a leg up on non musical people, and yet he could do this. So uh, that's a that's an answer. That's a non answer to <laughs> your question. <laughs> that works. I, don't, I don't really know. Um, the the I just thought that audio stuff was was fun at the time in '84 when I started speaking. Uh, the acting community, the anybody recorded community, really looked down their nose at commercials and cartoons because it wasn't done. Right. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it was beneath them, and 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 I thought, damn, this is art. This is fun. This is, oh, yeah. and, and I've never questioned it since. Uh, um, yeah, there's a there's a whole dynamic to it that a lot of people tend to overlook because it's cartoons because it's childish or you know but it it is absolutely an art medium um same thing with video games i know they're you know last oh so many years video games kind of went through that same thing where people would kind of look down upon it um and now we're really starting to realize like this is this is an art form just like movies are just like you know creating a tv show and, and there's a lot of work that goes into it. it, it there, there is, and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I, found, I found it, you know, very, very rewarding. I mean, in hindsight, I probably should have been a walk around actor as well. Um, but I just, uh, it, I didn't, you know, didn't, didn't go that route. But uh, yeah, I, I, obviously video games have gotten a lot more complicated and a, and a lot better, but there was a real attitude towards it then and now it's, it's much less it, and then the 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 situation with the uh the unions and all that kind of stuff changed a great deal here in the early 90s and we got a bunch of people like james taylor says when he was younger it was it was the, the it was hard to get into the room with the important people that's what you had to do was get into the room mm-hmm. with the important people whereas yeah. now with all the different forms of communication it's easy to get into the room with the important people when you get in there there's a million and a half other people in the room <laughs> yeah well i mean you've got you've got outlets like this you know a zoom call we, there's no way we would have had a, an interview today <laughs> if we weren't oh, exactly. able to you know um, so exactly. but now is definitely too the the time of creation you know, with, with new content creators and amateur people having outlets to have their voice and their ideas be heard. Um, So like kind of to piggyback off of that thought, are there, are there any, as a director, are there any like up and coming uh, people that 
you know you've seen that we should keep an eye out for any voice actors if you're asking about voiceover in general i would say for anybody who's uh, starting or, or, or listening is, is just start with what you do. What does your voice sound like and work outward from there. So you can't, so if you say, uh, if you're watching a, a, a television or listening to something, say, you know, I could do that. It's like when you're yeah. a kid, you, you know, you watch somebody play baseball and you think, yeah, I can do that. Or you think, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no way I can do that. Uh, and you, you kind of instinctively know. And, and, and um, but, and, and you work out from that. And uh, so, so start with the way you actually sound and then, and then, um, you know, just, just write copy from commercials or, or, or whatever you want to just work out, work out and, and exercise that muscle as it were. Of course, with Richard, there was no template. He just <laughs> appeared. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like that advice. That's People ask me where Richard came from, and I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I do know that I couldn't do Richard. Uh, I couldn't do Richard without. I couldn't s speak softly in Richard's voice. <laughs> right. You'll see it too. <laughs> you always had to be very loud, otherwise you couldn't find him. <laughs> and I eventually managed to do that, but. Uh, Forgive me for not answering your question about uh, up and coming artists. You don't sort of, it's not like that. You, it's, it's, you know, your agent calls you, you go to a situation, you, you, you meet various people. It's my process as far as casting is concerned is, is if I'm casting a show, I'll put in uh, kind of a ratio of, of two to three. I'll put in two ringers, two people I really know and trust. And then I'll put in three people that I don't know. And that's how I find new people. As a, as a me, musician, you, 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 yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, as a musician, what what's some of your favorite music to listen to? Oh, I'm a Ry Cooter guy. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm a finger picker. I'm a I'm a. Yeah. Uh, I I play you know James Taylor Ry Cooter, uh, all that kind of not quite Americana kind of stuff, but I just love I got the got the nails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And uh, I I I, I kind of like all that uh, that type of stuff. Um, yeah, that's that that's kind of what I do. So earlier you you mentioned that uh, you're you're doing a thing with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, do you remember like one of the first people you met when you, once you got into uh, voice acting? Do you remember like who the first person you met that really made you kind of geek out like? wow, I'm really part of this. This is really happening. Uh, the, the, the feeling that I think you're asking happened really, really early, really early when I was asked to go to sing for a session. I mean, I, I just remember that day, you know, oh my gosh, I'm getting paid to go to do a session. Um, so there wasn't uh, any particular, particular person. It was just we were just hustling everything we could. And you, you, you see different business uh, opportunities and you try to follow them. Forgive me for not being more articulate, but it was a, just a uh, it was a stream of things. Some, somebody said to me, uh, I, I, I did a TV commercial and I played the guitar and I produced it and I sang and it was a big hit. And somebody said, you know, uh, you ought to be doing voices. And I said, what's that? And they said, it's this. And I thought, oh my gosh. And they gave me entree to a to an agent. And of course, you're gonna you <laughs> at that time there was only like five guys in the whole of London that were allowed to work that were Yanks, that were Americans. <laughs> <laughs> it was there was only five That's, of us uh... they could call. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and so it was, you know, it was very, very it was it was very, very different. And um uh, anyway, uh, I, and again, at that time, I was doing nightclubs. So I was, you know, I was working for, for 25 bucks a night, you know, right. just, just beating yeah. myself up. Uh, and then somebody, and, and I never, ever, talk, I don't like talking about money, but the money was different doing commercials. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is this? I need to be doing more of this. And I loved it. I think that's a, that's the point is that I, I realized I needed to be doing it. And I really, really liked, you know, 
just the process. The, the, yeah. the whole thing. I do have a, a fun question that, uh, that we usually like to ask is, do you have any like uh, crazy or weird on the job moments that have he, happened? He brought that up earlier. Yeah, I brought it up because I was, I was concerned about asking about it. I mean, uh, there's, like I said, mostly that we just, we, we, we just laugh a lot and that's not a, a, a big help. I mean, there was one, I, I, I tried to find out whether or not, uh, 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 Mike Oldfield's Moonlight Shadow was a big hit in the States and it wasn't, it was a massive hit over here. And, uh, so it, it, it takes the point out of the story a bit, but I was singing, uh, I was singing uh, Radio Idents, uh, you know, W-A-O-C, you know, all, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, and, they, and I was doing it for two days. It was a three-day gig, and we're doing it for two days, and we're doing like three to four-part harmonies, trebled, and then a lead over the top. And you do it again and again and again, do it all day. And I'm singing with this girl, and she's a very nice girl, and she's a Scottish girl. And... The morning of the second day of recording, I uh, I uh, was half asleep and half awake, and I could hear this girl I was singing with sing this big hit, and I thought, man, she would sing that really, really well. I've got to tell her. So I went to the session, and halfway through the session, I said, I said, Meg, you know that song, Moonlight Shadow? And she says, yeah. I said, you know, the great big hit that's been a number one hit in the whole of Europe for weeks and weeks and weeks she said yeah i said you could sing that really well she said i did <laughs> <laughs> oh nice i've been, nice been move. a foot and a, foot and a half away from the woman for, for two or three days <laughs> <laughs> there's been a few like that there's a band called the damage i think i asked the guy what he did for a living i asked eric burden what he did for a living from the animals once <laughs> uh, eric burden of the animals i said do you, what do you do <laughs> oh man anyway we digress we should be talking cartoons <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fine that's fine um, uh, what's, your, but, what's your favorite yeah. cartoon yeah what's my favorite cartoon oh yeah. geez Putting you on the spot. i don't know there was a scene in there was a scene in 101 dalmatians when i was a kid where where the hundred at the end with 101 Dalmatians and the pretty lady with the pretty dress that was like the pretty lady that I thought was pretty. Yeah. And the husband was a songwriter and they lived in a house. And I thought, that's it. That's what I'm doing. I was about oh, nice. six. <laughs> and, I, that, that, and I got there. I got there. I got a Swedish wife and and then I don't have Dalmatians, but I live and then the house that I was talking about is actually up the street. I'd never lived in that house, but it was it was that groove. I don't know. Yeah. There's something about that kind of making that making a living doing that kind of stuff you liked. And and in a sense, uh, I, I got there. But inspiring cartoons. I did Roger Rabbit. Uh, I saw Roger Rabbit oh, nice. and I thought I sat there, had a bit of an epiphany and said, because that was about the time I was kicking off. And I thought, dude, this is what you need to do. Yeah, that was this, a great. This, this, this is yeah, stuff. Roger Rabbit's great uh, movie. Long that, time and, favorite. I met, I, I, I can't say I met Fleischer, but I shook his hand. Uh, very pissed in a club in LA. The only time I've ever been to LA. And I met him and said, I, I think you're really cool. He said, thank you. Bye. Did the same thing with him. <laughs> I did the same thing with Andrew Lloyd Webber. I met him once, and uh, oh, I was wow. talking with a girl called Gillian Lynn, who was the choreographer for uh, for um, Cats, um, and uh, we, we hung out a little bit. And uh, she said, "You have to meet Andrew. Andrew, you have to meet Andrew." So there was I was brought up to meet Andrew Lloyd Webber, and I swear to you, this is like four days before Cats opened. And Elaine Page is down and the on the stage singing, you know, da 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 da, da uh, that whole thing. And she taps Andrew Lloyd Webber and says, Dan, Andrew, this is Dan Russell. He's a wonderful songwriter from there. You have to meet him. And he shook his hand. He said, hello. Poof. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I just left. I mean, talk about bad timing. But uh, yes, I've had a few of those, <laughs> a few of those meetings before. But I mean, just to be have known Jillian Lynn's a big deal. She's a she's famous famous choreographer. I think you know if you get asked, you know, like 
who have you met? What have you done? You don't think about it. And then slowly yeah. you remember, you, you know, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't walk around Soho for 40 years and not meet a few people. Yeah, it's, I imagine. Yeah, that's, 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 that's completely cool. fair. That's completely fair. Uh, oh, by the way, you uh, make cartoons. We have a show called Elliot from Earth, uh, which yeah. is coming out on the Cartoon Network. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's that's the same people as the Gumball guys. Oh, oh nice. sweet. Uh, I'm doing sweet. about three characters in that. I'm not doing anything as big as Richard, uh, but that was announced the other day. I don't know if there's a date from that, but that's called Elliot. Elliot from Earth, and we don't have a sh- uh, a release date for the uh, the the Schwarzenegger uh, a f- thing that I'm doing with that. But we are. I'm on episode. <sighs> one oh uh episode 16 out of 26 so we're moving we're moving along with that yeah i'm just trying to think of cartoon related things um i go to i went to comic-con here one day uh, one year and was just scared (laughs) (laughs) man going as like somebody who goes to conventions like that it can be intimidating i can only imagine what it's like for the talent that is featured at places like that, you know, with all these fans just ravaging around you. <laughs> well, I was, I, I was, uh, I was disappointed cartoon network and the guys didn't, didn't do more in the merchandising side and taking us to things like that because, you know, obviously it was a, a portal and I love talking about it, but no, I just went as a person. Nobody knew who I was. Oh, which nice. Was, which nice. was fine. Uh, yeah. uh, but it, but it was just, there was a, there was a kind of, yeah nerd out intensity there that i just thought it can be a bit overwhelming even as you know like i've been to uh you know besides of course the last couple years um but i've been to an anime convention uh what is it like 12 12 years I went to the same one and I watched it grow from like a 3000 person convention to a 15,000 person convention. And it, man, the it's, it's intense. Just walk, just simply walking around and all the different stuff going on and the fandoms and everything. It's, well, it's nicely put what you say, because it is, it's just intense, but you, I don't know if we've got a word for it yet. There's just some kind of yeah <laughs> kind of stuff floating around the room and think, whoa, this is intense and I don't know why. You know, sort of, sort of like sort of like day two at, at in your first grade class. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is weird and I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> but of course, games are getting much more. Uh, uh, you know, they're they're acquiring. I don't know if if it's the industry trying to big itself up. Or if there is this level of interest, you know, but you know, calling calling games sports and stuff, it's all kind of part of the the ebb and flow of whatever gen they're working on at the moment. Is it Gen Z or? I'm, I'm uh, I think game. we're on the eighth generation, or or is it the ninth generation of video game console? So when did we start? You know, the, oh, it started <laughs> with Joni Mitchell. It's Generation One. <laughs> <laughs> with those sorts of things i suppose it there, there's a side of anywhere person can make a buck they're going to try to do it um so and you know twas ever thus and and we'll just see which stuff stays and which stuff has a life and which stuff doesn't yeah games without a doubt i wish i would like to do more games but uh games are you know they're discipline unto themselves but it's it's just trying to invest each line that you're doing knowing it's going to be chopped and changed and moved all over the place right with as much authenticity, I did a game once. <laughs> I did a game once, where, you know, like I said, you you try to give it all you got, and it was a war game, and of course, I, it was like a two hour session, and and it was blood on the mic. It was like, could you die again, please? Die again <laughs> now. This one, I want you to be stuck in the side of the head and die. And as you die, I want you to be have your leg cut off. You know, and, and, <laughs> all this, all this stuff. And, and, and you do it. I swear, this is the truth. Uh, this we and and as a little aside, this is in the same studio they recorded "Hey Jude" in. And uh, oh wow. And, uh, anyway, so where are yours? And, and this sob and the audacity. We recorded all these lines. I mean, it was about 12, 14 pages solid of just line after line. It was it was a fair old bet. He said, 
we finished this. He said, now we're going to do it again. I said, Why? <laughs> because we're going, to do it, we're going to do the version where you're allowed to swear. Uh, <laughs> so he handed me the script again, which was just full of, you know, the F word and this word and that word. And like an idiot, I, I said yes. And I think it was the closest <laughs> I ever came and really heard my voice. My voice is fairly... I shouldn't say it's indestructible, indestructible because something dreadful will happen. But I've been very lucky in that in that respect. You know, I maybe I was saying to somebody the other day about teaching or you know doing lectures because somebody asked me to do that. Uh, you forget all the stuff you learn, and so it makes it kind of hard to talk about it. Right. So I'm probably doing stuff to keep my act together, my brain together. You know, I'm probably going through rituals that you know that have been going on for. 35 40 years old yeah to get yourself done i notice it with my kids i'll ask them to do because they're in uh, jackson gumball and a few other things as well and i'll ask them to do things and they won't react and i will say to them how could you not possibly react how could you not possibly do that preparation and they're saying what what why what <laughs> to me it's second nature <laughs> all the time and then maybe that's what that's what being a, a pro voice person is Maybe that's what it is. It's all, it's all yeah, I, I remember a couple people we've talked to that have done video games, especially like where you have a, a two hour session that is pretty much just yelling into the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or so. you, you have to do it because you're going this direction, but then you need to give a response because you're they could also go this direction or you so have, you have a eight similar different response. Voice lines they could also go this area. direction. Yeah. Mm. I don't well, it, yeah, it, it is that. And it, that makes a very interesting point uh, because uh, that's really interesting. I got a theory that, uh, how do I put this succinctly? Uh, visual people are visual people. And they, they very often don't hear stuff. But in my opinion, a lot of visual people won't admit it whereas audio people will audio people will say i can't if i draw a picture of you you're going to get a stick figure <laughs> i can't draw anything at all yeah. but i can hear everything now yeah. that's a generalization i know but very often visual people they'll direct you that's why i'm a decent director i've had i've had directions for commercials they'll say uh okay now when you say the word and in this sentence, I want you to imagine you're in a moonlit beach and you've been jilted by your girlfriend, but you don't care. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I don't you even know, know what I, that I, means. I, I, I've had it. <laughs> they try to describe the audio stuff in. Right. And, 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 and my point about you were saying, well, we're going to, could you please scream like you're going up? Ah! Could you scream like you're going left? Ah! Could you give me the one right? Ah, dude, you know, a little bit more right. Ah! <laughs> oh shit! And and we had a we had a we had a, a a French guy. He couldn't speak. He was directing the English version of this cartoon, but he couldn't speak a word of English. But his girlfriend was the the person running the whole thing, and he said he draws very good pictures. So he would <laughs> bring us, he would show us, he, he would walk into the studio with his little drawing, he said, you see the pixel here of the, the back, the back on the tree, the, the, the back, he's falling down past the back. <sighs> we, we got an hour to record <laughs> our show. <laughs> you see the, the falling of the back, and you're, ah. <laughs> And you think, dude, just say fall high to low two seconds with an impact at the end. Give me some air before the impact. Ah, ugh, done. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, but it isn't. Am I, anyway, my, my, my point about, about uh, that's an interesting thing to do with, 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 with voice work is that's part of our job as a voice person is thinking what the director is thinking how much they want to know what you're thinking how yeah. little they want to know because some some directors are really really interested in what the voice artist is thinking 
Oh, yeah. They, yeah. And some of them just either couldn't care less <laughs> or don't have it together enough to ask the question. And, you know, if you're, if you voice people watching this and, and I'm sure, you know, any, all the good voice people will, will understand what I'm saying, but I've seen people go into sessions and do their act. That's the other thing is you don't go into a session and do your act. <laughs> Can you imagine if you're sitting there with two other voiceovers and you got one voiceover sitting next to you doing every joke you ever thought of? Oh man. Cannot, you know, they're like, you know, things like etiquette and things like that. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm going back to stuff I know that I forgot I knew. But those are all <laughs> interesting aspects of, uh, of, of voice work. It's, it's important to, you got to have a certain, certain levity but it's also real serious. You know, it's important. Sorry, I'm rambling. No, you're, <laughs> oh, fine. you're fine. You're fine. I, li- I like your, your theory about the audio people and visual people. It's not, I, it's not cut and dry, but it can happen. Well, I, I, I think I understand it because I'm definitely more audio. Um, I'm, and I, I do suck at drawing, but I also, I've, I've never had that ability where visual people, they can also hear. So it's probably they just they don't understand that there are depths to audio that they aren't yes. being able to it's sing like out. people saying mm-hmm. I can speak, therefore I can be a voice guy. It's right. Just, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like baseball. <laughs> I was I was trying to describe to to my wife how for write writing music and it didn't like when I heard things, it, it wasn't, I wasn't hearing sounds. I, it was more like a vision. I was seeing the sounds and it made me, it made it easier for me to move things around and place it into what I wanted. And I was trying to describe to her, like, I don't hear guitar parts in a normal way that people that I, the, the same way I would listen to a song is not how I'm hearing it when I'm writing a song. It's just completely different. She does. She didn't understand what I was trying to convey. Oh. And, but so well, this it, is and, and then this is where she 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 grabs you by the lapel and says, "You gotta take that job at that insurance company." <laughs> Just don't <talk. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you can you can overanalyze. The stars might lie, but the numbers never do. I mean, I've done stuff where I where where I swore that what I was recording was perfect, and you listen really hard, and it's just not. Right. And there's and there's no and there's no way around it. You got to make the sound. You know, how does how does uh, how does Beyonce sound like Beyonce? Because she sounds like that. Right. You know, mm-hmm. she, you, you, all these singers out there trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, how do you do Richard Watterson? I don't know how you do Richard Watterson. You just do Richard Watterson. You know, uh, <laughs> or, or the donut cop. Let me ask guys. Yeah, they your teeth for him. You know, it's 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 the way you, the the, the way you sound. But you got to be really kind of hard on yourself as far as audio stuff and you know what you're hearing. It's, it, my son is is, is uh, singing and 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 I didn't want to say it, but I said, dude, you're consistently under on that note, just like your dad. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, did I inherit that from you? Oh shit! But it's important while you're learning to uh, is, uh, because I never had that. I never had somebody. You know, walking out of the bathroom, say, "Dude, you're flat." You, not that I'm like a showbiz dad, but you you hear things and, and you try yeah. to try to try to help. For um, sure. But it, the the process the process is 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 fun and and you know like I'm I'm about to go do an audition now and I know that he's going to be because I'm over thirty years old. He's probably going to be a uh, he's probably going to be a tough fifty year old guy somewhere like that. And you know you just gotta do this stuff all day, don't you? And he's you know and and, and 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 if they say that, that's what I think. That's what I want to say it like. Uh, yeah. and, and 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 so you become you're gonna become a pastiche of yourself. Have they heard it before? And if you, it's all the second guessing yourself. You know? mm-hmm. All you can do is I'm, I got a very Protestant work ethic. New England <laughs> Protestant work ethic about the whole thing. I don't care about the competition. I hang my this is what you could take from the from the interview. I hang my sign on my door and say, "This is what I do," <laughs> and that's all you can do. Because you know, if you if you worried about you know numbers of people and how difficult it is, it's. Well, know. see, I I guess I was raised on the uh, the other side of the track, 
I have a very Catholic upbringing, which means I feel guilty about everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I hear that. I think that was overplayed a little bit. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. There is that. <laughs> there is that. No, we uh, I we we are we are we. Yeah, society was. You don't think about it, but society was pretty pretty conservative in New England in the. 50s and 60s but uh it was a nice place to grow up it was great boston was just rocking it was wonderful anyway listen guys thank you very much i will see you later and All right, uh, man. have a nice day in ohio yeah oh, for sure you too enjoy All your right. evening uh we're gonna enjoy the rest of our morning <laughs> okay see you later enjoy your morning bye bye, see ya. bye. Hey, this is Tired Dad, and you've been listening to the Two Dads in a Podcast interview series. For more content, like and subscribe to this channel. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitch, and everywhere podcasts are available. To help us bring you more of these amazing interviews, you can support us on our Patreon. Just follow the links below, and thanks for watching.